Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph a linear equation in slope-intercept form. Now, basically, when graphing a linear equation in slope-intercept form, we need to make sure that first it's in slope-intercept form, and then second, what exactly are the components of slope-intercept form? So I'll just kind of write this. Uh, I guess I'll write it right in between. So remember, slope-intercept form is in the form of y equals mx plus b, where m represents the slope and b represents the y-intercept. Now, the slope, remember, is a ratio, right? It's the ratio of the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates. So we use slope-intercept. You know, We use slope formula y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. But that's not really going to help us because we don't really have any coordinate points. We have an equation that we need to graph. A lot of times we talk about um, slope as rise over run. And that's the, probably the most common um, one we determine with that. But I always like to think of it as the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates. Now, b represents the y-intercept. And that's going to be where the graph is going to cross the y-axis. And you could say that the vertical axis is the y, and the horizontal axis is the x. Remember that the y-intercept is a point where slope is a ratio, a comparison between two quantities. Y-intercept is a point, which we write as 0, comma b. So when graphing slope-intercept form, the first thing that I like to do is identify my m and identify my b. Then once you identify your m and your b, plot the y-intercept, and then use the slope as the ratio to find two other points on the line. Um, or at least another point that's on the line, because you only need two points to make up a line. So let's go ahead and look at y equals x. Now, a lot of students will look at this y equals x and say, that's not in slope-intercept form. Well, technically, it is. Because y equals, we need to have an m, which is the coefficient of x. So that's going to be 1, x. And then my y-intercept is going to be plus 0. So we can say that m is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0. So my y-intercept is going to be at 0. Now, in this case, our slope is not a fraction. right? Remember, slope is a ratio, right? change in y over change of x. I just have one number here. So what we can do, we need, can, whenever we have a whole number as our slope, we want to rewrite that as a fraction. So what I do is I just put it over 1. So basically what it's saying is that be, between any two points, that's what the slope represents, between any two points, the change in y is 1 and the change in x is 1. So therefore, between any two points, my change in my y is 1 and my change in my x is 1. And yes, you only can use two points to do this. But if you just continue your slope, you're going to keep on choosing points that, are, that lie on the line. All right? And I'm doing points in the positive direction. And that's OK. You could also do it in the negative direction, which I'll explain a little bit further later. So therefore, I'm going to take a ruler or whatever you want to. And then remember, this line um, continues indefinitely. So I'm going to use nice arrows. OK. So now in the next example, we have y equals x minus 2. Again, we don't have a coefficient in for x. But that's OK. Hopefully, you understand here that m equals 1, again, just like we did. And again, actually, I don't like writing when I'm graphing. I just write it. I just automatically rewrite it as 1 over 1. And b equals negative 2. So remember, b is a coordinate point. So technically, the coordinate point is 0, comma, negative 2. But again, we're going to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. The change in the y is positive 1. The change in the x is positive 1. So up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. We don't need to keep on doing multiple points. You really only need to do two points, and you get your graph. OK. So now let's do y equals 2x. Now in this case, you can see we don't have a b. But remember, we can always go back and look at this and say, well, I can always add a 0. So therefore, my m equals negative 2, and my b equals 0. Now, I like dealing with negative slopes because this kind of brings in another problem here that we have, is that my slope is negative, and I need to, and it's not a fraction. So the first thing, actually, I'm going to rewrite this as a fraction. Now, it's very, very important to understand that negative 2 over 1 is equivalent to negative 2 over 1, which is equivalent to positive 2 over negative 1. These are all the same thing. It doesn't matter if the negative's in the denominator, negative's in the numerator, or negative's just right in front. So when you have an example, always write the negative in front because you might want to put the negative always right in front because when you're graphing it, it might be easier to graph with the negative above or in the numerator or in the negative denominator. And I'll show you how that works. 
First of all, though, we know our y-intercept is at 0, right? So first thing we're going to want to do is put it at 0. Now, let's go with the slope as it is. m equals negative 2 over 1. Negative 2 over positive 1. So if the slope is negative 2 over positive 1, the change in the y-coordinates is negative 2. That means to find my next point, I need to go down 2 units. Then it says the change in the y-coordinate, or the x-coordinates, is positive 1. So I need to go over 1. So therefore, that creates my, that tells me to my next point. Down 2 over 1. However, what if I wrote it as m equals 2 over negative 1? Like I told you, it doesn't matter. Well, if I still start at my y-intercept, right? because whenever you're graphing, you start at your y-intercept, then you use the slope from there to graph. So if my slope is positive 2, that means now I'm going to go up 2. And the change in the y is negative 1. That takes you to the next point. And as you go ahead and connect your points, what you notice is from the y-intercept, it doesn't matter if I go down and to the right or up and to the left. They're both going to be points on the line. So that's why it doesn't matter when you have a negative in front. Should it go above or should it go below? It doesn't matter. You're going to produce two points that are on the line as well. And you only need to do one of them to create a line. All right, so now let's get into some fun ones. Now these ones. Um, here, these actually are probably a little bit more trickier than the other ones because the other ones have these other ones, um, you know, we are missing like a slope or a y-intercept, or it wasn't very apparent what the slope or the y-intercept was. Here it's pretty laid out. We know that m is equal to 3 halves and b is equal to negative 5. So what I do is I first go to my y-intercept, I go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I follow my slope, and that's positive over positive. So I can go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then over 2, 1, 2. Basically, what we're doing is creating what we call a slope triangle. You go up 3, over 2. And you can continue doing that, but I'm going to kind of move a little bit quicker. We only need two points. I showed you if you keep on following the slope, over 1, up 1, you're going to stay on the line. Over 1, up 1. Down 2, over 1. You're going to keep on staying on the line if you follow the slope. So you only need to find two points. And once you have those two points, you connect and graph. All right, in the next one here, again, you can see my negative is in front. So ooh, I got to make sure I go back and determine, should the negative be above or below? And it doesn't matter. Pick. So I go to my y-intercept, though, or m equals negative 1 half, b equals 1. So remember, b is the y-intercept, which is 0 comma 1. So I'm going to go up to 1. Then, I'll just put it in the numerator. Doesn't really matter. So my change in my slope is negative, so that means I'm going to go down 1. And then my change in my x is positive 2, so that's going to go over 2. Then I just connect my two points. Kind of ran out of space, so I'll make a bad line. All right, and the last one again, um, when you have slope is a positive number, always rewrite it as 3 over 1. Put it as over 1. So therefore, you know what the change in the y over the change in the x is. Um, 4 is going to be my y-intercept. So I go y inter or my b, which is my y-intercept. I'll just write it as y-intercept, is um, 4. So I go up to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, here comes a problem. If I was going to do this as 3 over 1, I'd go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then over 1. Well, that's kind of like off my graph. So another thing to understand is 3 over 1 is equivalent to negative 3 over negative 1, right? Because a negative divided by a negative is positive. So rather than always using positive or positive, which is preferred, sometimes it's better to rewrite your positive or positive as a negative over a negative, which is equivalent to it. Why? Well, instead of going up and to the right, if I do the change in y is negative 3, I go down 3. And then changing the x is one, negative 1, I go to the left. And therefore, then I connect my two points and graph. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a linear equation in slope-intercept form. Thanks.